Well, I thought I'd film my introduction outside today and hopefully you can hear me. It's a little bit windy. Our autumn is quickly drawing to a close, at least as far as the leaves are concerned. There's still a few on the trees, but the wind is <laughs> quickly taking care of that. But you know, artistically, I love this time of year because it kind of renews my passion and interest in tree limbs, tree branches. And it's not just entire trees, it's, it's details. And that brings me to one of the favorite trees in our yard. This is an ornamental plum. And if you've been around my channel long, you've seen me do floral blooms from this tree. It's got incredible limb structure and bark. Birds build nests in the tree every year. It's been pruned, oh, half a dozen times, which ends up lending these uh, knots and knobs where the prunings have happened. So that's all very interesting. Of course, the bark has a lot of character to it. Well, that's gonna be the subject of our painting today. And I'm gonna do it very detailed and very realistic. And just recently, I've discovered how much I enjoy painting with the Derwent Graphitent pan set. And I wanted to see how we could do something very realistic with that uh, pan set. And I just thoroughly enjoy doing this and I am going to enjoy sharing it with you even more. So let's go take a look. Hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, let's talk about briefly what I'm going to use to paint this today. Uh, this is a new paper, and this uh, episode is not going to be a paper review, but this is Artist Loft. And if you're at all familiar with that brand, you know that's a Michaels brand. And yes, I know, probably immediately a lot of you are thinking, hey, wait, Artist Loft products are crap. Pure, unadulterated crap. You know, I can't really say that myself because I haven't tried many. Uh, I'm sure some of them probably are, but that's what I hear a lot from people. Anyway, uh, be that as it may, this was pointed out to me by a regular viewer and patron that it is 100% cotton mold made extra white paper. It's a block. I've already got my drawing here. Glued on all sides like blocks usually are. So we're gonna give it a try. And this is also interesting, made in Italy. So could it be Fabriano? Fabriano makes an extra white. Sounds like it could be. Now, uh, the price of this was comparable to Arsh uh, at their regular price. So again, you may be saying, well, why should I bother with that? Just get Arsh or Fabriano. True, uh, the only reason it might be worth checking out is because you can regularly get a 20% off coupon and quite often, if you get on their mailing list or go online, I think, to their website, you could probably download a 40% off coupon. At least that's what I've been told. I ended up using the app and the 20% off coupon. So this that made it a deal. That made it pretty good value for the money. What I'm going to be using is uh, the Graphitent pan set. Now, I'll put up on the screen right now. This is the photo I used as my reference. Now, what you'll notice about it uh, and you'll notice this as I paint, uh, I've departed in some ways and a number of ways and how I drew it. And that is pretty typical for me. It's one of the reasons I don't often put photos up and have the photo be showing all the way through. Anyway, you can see in the photo that there are a lot of grays, a lot of neutral colors, warm and cool. And so the Graphitent palette, I think is going to be perfect for this. I did a sketch book sketch recently on a video for patrons and I used this and I uh, just really loved the process and how it turned out. And I thought, oh, I want to do a bigger painting. So that's what we're going to do. The entire painting is going to be done with this brush. This is one you don't see me use very often, but I really do love it. Uh, it's a uh, silver brush, golden natural. Golden naturals are a synthetic and natural hair mix. I spent a good bit of time drawing in some of the details. Uh, the photo, again, uh, let's pop it up on screen, is overwhelming in detail. It's got almost too much detail. Well, not almost, it does. So there is going to be some simplification involved, but I want to get some of that rich texture in there. That's what interested me about the subject to begin with. So uh, I'll bring, again, as I said, this photo up from time to time so you can see how I'm simplifying it. I think what I'm going to do to start is use the steel blue and the graphite gray. The steel blue is a cool gray. 
and the graphite gray is a warmer gray. But those will keep uh, the value fairly neutral to begin with, and then I can layer in more color if I want to bring that color up in any area. All right, so what I want to talk about in this piece in particular is overwhelming detail. A lot of granular detail. You can see it here in the photo, and if you look at the the flat areas between edges and shadows, you can see what I'm talking about, just little bits of texture. Those are the kind of things that you're gonna to wanna to cut out and limit. And to start with, what I recommend, and you can see me doing it here, is to start defining the major pieces or the bigger chunks. I'm doing a combination of sort of shading in larger pieces and finding cracks and crevices which are plentiful in this bark, okay? This is sort of akin to putting together a jigsaw puzzle, if you will. Now things like the branches, they're easy to paint. I mean, you just fill them with a color and then you can kind of come back and underline them with a shadow. But this bark texture, what you need to look for are the major pieces and the bigger, the better, because uh, it's always easier to go back and subdivide those pieces of bark into little pieces and add little bits of texture. What I'm doing also, uh, the, the darker strokes here are the little cracks and I'm using those to kind of add as my delineators, my fences, if you will, the, the, the way to indicate where that piece is going to be. And a piece like this shape is really everything. But you'll notice that I'm staying completely away from little sandy, gritty bits of texture. And even in the end, I'm going to stay away from that. So find the pieces that you want to draw and paint. And find the edges that you want to draw and paint. Start out with bigger shapes. Don't have to worry about a lot of shading to begin with. And once you get the characteristics of what some of those shapes and pieces of bark look like, how they curl up, create a shadow underneath them, you can actually start drawing your own, your own pieces of bark. I mean, I left out a lot. And if there's no other lesson I want you to get from this piece, from this demonstration, it's just how much you can leave out and still come away with a realistic piece, and in a lot of ways maybe a more realistic piece. Because you're communicating to the viewer's eye. You're leading them to see the details that you want, you feel are important. Now on these little kind of wrinkles, I'm getting pretty granular. That's about as detailed as I'm gonna get. But I can also go back over those later and unify them with a wash if I need to. Still, what I'm doing mainly here are putting up fences, putting up borders. Think of it, like I said, as a jigsaw puzzle, but also like a map. If you were to draw a map and then decide where you want your, your borders of your properties to be, that's kind of what I'm doing here. And you can make those properties, divide those sections in any way that you want. You're the artist. Use your reference as a guide, you know, to where those passages are, where those cracks are. I think bark is, is kind of, especially really detailed textured bark like this, uh, really gives you some, some good guidelines for simplification because of those crevices, those dark cracks and crevices. You can go through and add those and then work on the pieces between them. The little areas between them. Now as I start to get some of these pieces decided, defined, uh, then I start working on shadows a little bit. I don't save that all to the end, you know, do just divide everything up into its pieces of bark and then go back and shadow it. I do a little bit of it as I go back and forth because it kind of helps me know what I need to do next. So as I see a piece developing, sometimes I'll go ahead and add a shadow. Uh, because uh, it kind of helps me see the rest of it or the areas around it and what needs to come next. Now, once uh, you have everything divided up, 
defined and delineated the way you want in the major pieces of the texture. And again, I, I stress the major pieces. Then you start defining the shadows and adjusting the values. And from here on out, uh, with the exception of painting those, those thin branches that come off of it, from here on out, most of what you're going to see is adjustment. Adjustment, adjustment, adjustment. I may add a few little extra texture bits, but basically you're just going to see me go in and make this part darker, make that part darker, because I see where shadows are. I see how the light revolves around the form of the limb. That distant limb, by the way, the one that branches off towards the back. I want to keep that less detailed. So I want to know that it's there. But I'm giving it a sort of a bluish cast. So it will recede to the eye. And I'm keeping the details fuzzier. A little less dark. And the, the branches, just to note about those, is they branch off of the limb. Some of them come towards you. So the light is above them and they're darker. Some of them bend backwards, so they catch more of the light. So that's why you're going to see some of them lighter and some of them darker. And that dark one, that thin, dark thin one, will be casting a shadow forward. You'll see me towards the end putting in the shadow. As we near the end, you will see the tiniest details being added. And they're still not very tiny. They're still not as granular as what you saw in that photo, and they don't need to be there. There's so much of that little granular detail that will just absolutely detract from your piece in the end. It'll make it so gritty and busy that the viewer just uh, will have trouble looking at it. <laughs> so I'm after clarity. When I do something realistic like this and I really want to feature this texture, I'm looking for clarity. I'm putting in some cast shadows there. These are getting down to the final touches. And again, most of what I'm doing now is adjustment. Adjustment of values, getting those shadows into little darker areas, especially on the shadow side. And I just want a wonderful clarity and sort of absorbing of that really juicy, lovely texture without just bombarding the viewer's eye with all this granular texture. This is, I know, probably easier to say than it is to do, but this is the process of simplification and making artistic judgments uh, about what the viewer will see. It's only so much that the eye can handle. And after a while, detail just becomes super superfluous and useless. I will add a few highlights now that I've got most of the detail in. I'm just going to use the bleed proof white for this. I could also use ink. I've used white ink. But I like uh, using the bleed proof here because it's water soluble. And if I want to kind of soften it later, I can. And it's, the, it's pretty much the last step here. So on the light side of this piece, I'm just picking out a few glints and highlights just to complete the way the light rotates around the subject. And I think that works. I think we've got a piece here that communicates, gets across all that texture, and yet it's quite a bit simpler than the original. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got some useful tips out of this. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.